as newsworthy to pass along is they're going to be wearing their all white uniforms oh, cool. in LA. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it'll look a little slower. That's exciting, Rock. Yeah. You know. Well, do you want to talk about the Michael Bidwell story that hit? <laughs> oh, no, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we did that. Uh, Howard Balzer joins us now from Go PHNX to talk some Cardinal football. I had a great story uh, up uh, yesterday in regards to James Conner and in the numbers that show that, hey, he only plays about 20%. <laughs> anyway, but uh, uh, I want to ask you, in regards to a James Conner, if he was healthy, would he be on the trading block? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. I hadn't contemplated uh, that one, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that he would be because I think, and, and, you know, a lot of people have been asking that's about other players that, you know, could, could Zach Ertz be in the trading block? Could Hollywood Brown, considering mm-hmm. you know, sure. his contract is up after this season? And so I I, I think this team, you know, still, still wants to have at least, um, you know, be competitive, obviously. But, yeah, but if he was healthy, I mean, who knows? If the team came to them and said, we'll give you something of value uh, for Connor, then, and, and remember that, you know, that would also, uh, you know, he has, he has one year left on his contract. And, it, you know, that, was, that, was, that wasn't that was a great contract, certainly. I mean, let's remember, as I mentioned in the story, the, card, uh, the Cardinals were able to sign James Conner to a one-year, $1.75 million deal in 2021 because of his injury history with the Steelers. And he didn't sign with the Cardinals until almost a month after the beginning of the league year. So, I, you know, because of his injury situation, I don't know if another team would have that much, would have interest in him. Certainly if they lost the running back, maybe. But, you know, who knows? I mean, obviously that's, you know, that's speculation. But it certainly leads to wondering is will they, you know, you know will, will they keep him around next year? Uh, because, you know, you mentioned the 20%. That, I mean, he, he's not available 20% of the time. He's missed <laughs> over 20% of his games, you know, in his career, which is a big chunk of time. And it's just, it's just, you know, it's just the way it's been with him, unfortunately. And so, you know, if they, if they play well with the committee of running backs that they have, that could say the Cardinals, hey, we don't have to pay James Conner uh, next year. So you know, we can bring in, you know, maybe another young guy to compete with who they have and, and still be, and still be competitive. So I think that's where the question might uh, arise more after this season. But one, you know, uh, but once again, I don't know if it'll be tradable. Because he's up there in years, obviously, and he does have that injury history. So when he does play, I think the rub is hard. When he does play, he's damn good. But he's got you. Got to be able to. You, you can't make the club in the tub, or you got to be uh, available. As they all say, and that's I think that's the rub right there. It's awful. Yeah, but he's our bell cow when he's healthy. But he's not healthy enough. I think that's the dilemma the Cardinals would would kind of go for if there was a trade offer for him. No, I, I think you're 100% right. And so, you know, that's, that's what it does come down to. And we, we know the running backs get hurt. I mean, Saquon Barkley's hurt again uh, with the Giants. And, you know, we see that we have, you know, Christian, Christian McCaffrey was on the trading block essentially he was, A, making a lot of money, but also he had missed a lot of time in two seasons with the Panthers. He's, he's been healthy since he's been uh, with the 49ers since they got him last year. But you just never know uh, with running backs. And so that's. But they, they do want to be a team that is able, you know, to run the football. But we have seen a lot of, we have seen teams that are that are able to do it, you know, with guys that, uh, you know, that aren't aren't getting a lot of money, aren't high, you know, high draft picks. And so, you know, that's that's one thing the Cardinals will have to decide, you know, in the off season. So, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see where that how that plays out. Obviously, let me just follow up on the on the trade scenario then, Howard. So you do really not see the Cardinals as sellers as we get to the trading deadline. You see them pretty much as status quo. Well, I, I'm not saying that they won't be sellers. Okay. And but it, obviously, it takes two te- You know, it takes another team to want one of their guys. And so, you know, Zach Ertz has has you know he's he's been okay. But I think he's averaging like five yards a reception as he's come back from the ACL and. You know, that's, that's a tough thing to come back from, you know, obviously. And so would another team, you know, if, if you can get a draft pick for a tight end, and, you know, who knows if Zach Ertz will be in their plans next season. So if you can get a draft pick for him, if team is interested, then, yeah, I, I, I would not surprise, you know, to see a deal. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, all I was saying is that I don't, I don't know that those giveaway guys, 
just to make a trade. Because if you're, I mean, if you're getting a six-round pick, mm-hmm. what do you really gain, you know, truly uh, from that? And I do think they want to at least send a little bit of a message that, you know, we want leaders, we want veterans, you know, in this locker room, and we want guys that the younger younger players can, you know, can learn from. And so, so I, I think that's the, you know, that's the thing you're balancing there. Uh, but, you know, but like, again, it all comes down to if any other teams want uh, some of the players, you know, the Cardinals have. And so, who knows? You know, Hollywood Brown is a real intriguing one mm-hmm. because, you know, he's arguably not, probably not arguably, he is their best wide receiver right now. Good on third down, has good speed, thir- but he's making $13.4 million and he'll be a free agent. So uh, is, is he worth what he, what, what Brown will probably want? In terms of, I mean, heck, we saw Christian Kirk leave when he was getting $18 million a year. Do the Cardinals want to go to that level to keep Hollywood Brown? I would say I would lean to maybe not. And so if that's the case, he might, he might be the guy on this roster that would have perhaps the most value if another team you know, wanted, to, you know, wanted to add a receiver. So if you get a good draft pick for him, then I, I can certainly understand the Cardinals you know, doing that. You know, Monty Austin has got Three so minutes. much to deal with this year and then next year. Yep. But the story, how we didn't really dive into it too much last year about the story coming out that that, that Kyler Murray may sit the rest of the year, that um, they may trade him. All the minutia surrounding him last week in reference to, well, Josh Dobbs is doing a pretty good job. And then, yeah, getting this Cowboys. And last week, he kind of, you know, fell flat. I mean, there was so much that happened this last week and that might have curtailed that story. I just want to get your thoughts about how much prying you tried to do because they were coming out. I think it was Rappaport or somebody said that they, they, other sources outside of the Cardinals complex were insinuating that there may be a, a lot of movement with Kyler after this year, and he may not play at all this year. Well, he, here's the thing about that, and here's what I thought from the very beginning. First of all, I believe he will play because here's the thing. If, if the Cardinals want – if the Cardinals, let's say – Two minutes. They want to move – and I don't know that – I don't think they've made that decision right now. But if they decide they want to move on from Kyler Murray, in terms of they have to get another team to take that contract off, off sure. their hands mm-hmm. because of the massive, the massive, you know, salary cap dead money there would be if you just release them. So you can't just release them; you have to trade them. And to me, the only way another team is going to trade for him is if they see him play this season. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, what 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 team, you know what team is going to you know, trade something of value and take that contract for a guy if he hasn't played? the entire season and plus you'd like to see him not only play and play you know pretty pretty well which you know could be tough to do with the rust that there'll be and with the team he has around him but the one aspect of it you know of, of it is, is is that you know like i said is a team going to you know t- take take that contract and they want they want to see him stay healthy i mean it's not like this acl is the only injury he's had in his four seasons with the cardinals so any team trading for him one minute one minute about him playing and him staying healthy. So I've never bought that he's going to miss the whole season. As Jonathan Gannon said in his radio interview earlier this week when he was asked point blank if he sees him playing a decent amount of games, he said, I do. And so I believe that he will play. And I think that's – and that the Cardinals need to see that if they want to – if they want to entertain thoughts of keeping him around and, you know, having him under contract and just going forward. Uh, with him and if you have a high draft pick and teams want a quarterback well you can get a whole bunch of draft picks for that and help build you know continue to build your team so you know people throw this stuff out there to me it's just speculation obviously it's rumors i mean sources outside the cardinals who's saying that (laughs) some have speculated it might be from murray's camp but Mm -hmm. he doesn't you know he's upset with the ownership for the whole contract thing which of course a lot of the contract thing was, you know, put out there by him and his agent. It was what they did. But but he has to realize, and his agent has to realize, that even if they would want to move on and, and go to another team, the only way to make that happen is if he gets out there and plays this year. And so I, I, just, I just don't buy it. I might be 100% wrong on it. I don't think I will be. I think the guy's going to play. I think he'll probably be returned to practice in the next couple of weeks which would, you know, make him, I mean, he can be available to play right away, but he's going to need some practice time. So it could, you know, it could make him available to play around week nine or week 10. And that gives you a good bunch of games to see him in this system with his team, you know, coming down the end of the season. 
He's Howard Balzer. Go PHNX.com. You can follow him on Twitter at HBalzer721. Always nice enough to join us on a Thursday afternoon. Howard, have a good weekend, man. Thanks for the time. My pleasure, guys. Take care. By the way, um, the uh, yeah, an, an analyst for ESPN, Mike Clay, did some projections on the rest of the season from strength of schedule and rankings. Yep. And the Cardinals have the fourth toughest slate of games ahead. 